clearly we can't work out there. It's um downpouring. Which is okay with me because I actually have these control arms to extend for the tilted TDI. You see, for the camber numbers we want to achieve, these arms are just a little bit too short, so we're gonna have to extend them. And there may be a little bit beat, but these are actually the original arms off the purple TDI that I had, which is, you know, sentimental to me. But I got the old bushings pushed out. They were they they were toasted. And I just pressed in some new ones just right on the vise. Thankfully, they came right out. Funny enough, the metal that we're going to be using to extend these arms is actually just some angle iron. So if I turn this arm over on its side, you can see it's got this contour here for structure. And I've extended arms before and actually followed this and then built off some structure from there. But I want to extend these arms exactly one and a half inches, exactly like the other side. So I'm literally just going to put that there and extend it with the angle iron. It's going to keep that structure. We're going to trim off these side pieces and then drill a hole right about here, exactly an inch and a half. So it's like all measured out and stuff and equal. And have some extended control arms, which is so exciting. If you look at these arms, we actually have only about an inch and a half to play with before these arms starts to contour out. So my plan is to have an inch and a half on the material itself and then have two inches of extend out. So we have about three and a half inches of overall metal. And then we have a half inch on the very end for structural reasons, exactly like the stock arms. I'm gonna do the smart thing and build these one arm at a time to make sure that this all works when I weld it up and has exactly the fitment that I want before I go ahead and apply the pressure to the second one. So if I mess this up, I only have one mess up and not two. Three and a half inch angle iron. Oh, that needs to be trimmed. So I trimmed it. Look at that. Control arms are ground down and prepped. These brackets are ground down and prepped. Marked out for an inch and a half. We're gonna put that right there, tack these up, and then we're gonna weld them. Oh my God, the fit up is so nice. I also got these holes cleaned out for in here so I can do a plug weld on the backside, but this is gonna go so smooth. I got a few tacks on each corner. It's time to clean this up and get some serious welds on there, but she's coming along. Got both sides finished out. Now I'm just trying to figure out what way I want to go ahead and bridge this, or even if I do want to bridge it. But one thing I do know is this is super strong and straight as an arrow. So either way, I don't really have to put the brace, but you know, we're going to be skating at some speeds and this is going to be static. So it's going to be taking a beating. It's probably gonna be a smart thing to put a little, little something there. I cut this little piece down. I'm just going to put that right there, tie these two together a little bit at the base. Everyone's going to be happy. <laughs> Got that last little piece all mounted up, but got my hole centered out, measured out, and uh, it's time to drill. It looks pretty crazy, but I got the holes drilled. They're a good inch and a half longer, and they're going to replace this rusty old... I don't know why all German engineering has to uh, ruin my day, but the sway bar in the way of the tow arm bolts. This is not a meme. I literally have the jack up on a 22 mil, up on a 10 mil, up on an M10, triple square. Well, it worked and I missed it, but it's okay because it worked. This almost became a recovery mission because I thought I grabbed the 10, but I grabbed the nine and it rounded the, barely rounded the heads off and I was really worried. I grabbed my 10. I saved the day. And I'm gonna reuse the bolt. Now that that's off, this bolt can now, oh, perfect, slide out. Honestly, at this point, I'm using the jack for everything. I'm not gonna use my, yep. This tie rod bolt is absolutely driving me crazy. So I took the time and um, 
put on the lower control arm front mount bolt and it lines right up. Look how good that looks. Oh, I'm so happy. Okay, this is the motivation I needed. Oh yeah, mm-hmm, just watch. Just watch this struggle. Oh, wait, wait, oh, yes. Remember being a YouTuber is full of struggles and some, some bummer moments. My friends all just texted me. They said they're going to get some, some barbecue food. And I said, I can't go filming a YouTube video. And honestly, I'm happy with my decision. Although I wish I was there, I know that this is gonna be worth it in the end. So if you have a goal to work towards, work towards it, let's get it. Out. I'm in a good mood. We got that out. We got this disconnected. We got this disconnected. We got the shock removed. Only thing left to do is the lower control arms, inner bolt, which is always seized. And my new method of jacking up the wrench is about to uh, show itself. So wish me luck. Cause last time I did this, it took me five hours. So we'll either make or break it. Probably break it. Let's hope not. Oh, you hear the crunch? Good. I like it. Oh, that might have stripped it. Oh, yeah, the wrench is on an angle, baby. Oh. Oh, we're good. I'm not even joking. 18 to a 20. And, uh, came right off. Now, although this has been a struggle, it's nothing like it was the first time I did it, like six years ago, back in like 2016. I just jumped underneath the car, tried taking all the nuts and bolts off, had no guidance, and the thing was rusted. So what I did the other day was I sprayed all the bolts down with WD-40, all of these came off, and this one last bolt, I left it to be the last one on this control arm, because that bolt, every single time, gets seized. The nut comes off, but the inside by the threads, inside of the bushing, gets seized. So right now... I'm gonna jump underneath there. Hopefully get it out before daylight's over. But uh, we got this. This has been me for the past, I don't know, 10 minutes. Yes, it is what it looks like. It is I, Alex Wittick, out here at 8.30 p.m. smacking this bolt. I'm not joking. Look at the head of the bolt when I move the control arm. It moves because it's seized inside of that bushing. When I get it out, somehow, some way, you guys are gonna see. 10 p.m. Three hours later, we are we are giving up on this for tonight. Gotta pack it up, call our L's, try it out in the morning. Day two. We got the torch out here. It's 3:30. I gave up on this, but my buddy works at Volkswagen. He drives the van. You know what he said? I got two of those bolts on board. All right, I'm chopping it out. I cut halfway through the bolt. Look at that. Look at that hack chop. Got a little more to go, just a little bit. Oh my God, look at me, I'm filthy. Oh, look at that mother bolt. You can literally see the layer of salt in there. Yeah, that bolt was so seized. You can literally see the layer of crust just like crystallized around it. The oh, the parts plug, the parts plug, Sean. <laughs> well, huge shout out to Sean. If anyone needs a part in order to that bolt, there it is. But Sean told the boys over at Volkswagen that I needed this part. They got it in the bag and Sean drove it over to me. Sweet. Put that Rust-Oleum rust reformer paint on there. Since I paint prepped it the other day by just hitting it with the wire wheel and just getting the heavy rust off, I said, just go back over with this and it just eats away at any rust, it adheres to it and it gets rid of it. Oh, that looks so good. It's 8.30, Wednesday morning. This thing is coming together. I'm sleepy, but man, just seeing this arm makes me just wanna, bam! I mushroom the cap, re-threading it real quick. Oh, that looks awesome. So now I gotta pull this out and I'm gonna use the jack. Now that I got this all jacked up and I got the adjuster nuts all the way maxed out to the back, this lines up beautifully, but it's a little bit cocked. So I gotta go ahead and put on my new toe arms that I made 
well that you guys and i are about to make throw it on there max it out get that all to sit right and then we'll throw the controller on because right now it's way too crooked the box is opening themselves now this is normal inside of this fedex package we got a few things normal size now inside of this huge box we got these two hex tubes that's it it's out of the whole entire box now the reason i ordered time joints and hex tube is to replace these megan arms these megan arms are like 260 dollars on ebay you know they got rubber bushings or junk where this, I made these for $40 an arm and they're heim joints. If you know anything about camber is it stresses out rubber parts. And if you know anything about alignments, they're held by rubber parts. So I'm gonna make these look like these, put these on the car and we get up some big tilt with some big strength and know that our alignment's gonna be dead straight. Oh yeah, it's a nine inch tube. There's the part number. If you guys wanna get these, they're literally on allstar.com. These things are gorgeous, powder coated, then they're laser engraved. Oh my. One of the greatest things about these arms is the whole entire tube's got the hex. You can literally grab it at any part with a wrench. For this, you only grab in the center, and if you strip it, it's kind of beautiful, just like that. She's all together. I got the misalignment spacers in the top. I forgot to order one for the bottom, but I needed the sleeve. So I was like, ah, oh, I can't throw it in, but I realized Amazon has them for seven bucks. So it'll be here tomorrow. I'm gonna throw this in the car now. It'll just be a little bit of slot, but this car won't be road ready for like another couple days. So we're gonna throw it together for now. Two arms in, all bolted up, and look at that. Look at that, brother. Got this all lined up, ready to put the bolt in, but I'm waiting on the Volkswagen truck. Yes, I have the dealer delivering me parts. Name another YouTuber has the dealer delivering parts to their house for their stance mobile. They're gonna bring me control arm bolts, and then we'll have that all bolted up. Oh my God. Volkswagen delivers to my house. To my house, straight to my doorstep. Even better. Bye, Sean. Bye, Volkswagen. Sean leaves. I go to touch the camber arm, the upper control arm camber arm. Seized. Look at all that corrosion. So since the bolts are stuck, I was freaking out. But then I realized Sean didn't get out of work till five. So I texted him the part number that I needed. Sean FaceTimed me, showing me these pictures of what I needed exactly. And now he's going to drive back over here to deliver me the parts. So if you guys aren't already following Sean, follow him. Here's his Instagram right here and comment on his recent post. Thanks for helping out, Alex, because I really appreciate it. When Sean comes, I'll be able to get this all together. If I can get this bolt chopped, no guarantees because I don't have a reciprocator saw right now. But that's okay because neighbor Nick has a reciprocator saw. Big J might have his reciprocator saw in the truck. And if not, I'll run over to Harbor Freight and I'll grab a saw for like, what, 60 bucks or something like that. So run the likes up so I can pay for that stuff. Don't actually like the video. Throw it a dislike. What did I tell you? Saw doesn't work. So I'm robbing Nick's truck for this one. <laughs> well, I'm mad. I may as well steal this one as well. We're all in this together. Don't mind if I do. Ba -da -ba 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 -da. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Professional. Full feet ahead, baby. Oh, maybe not. I need a break. <laughs> got Sean set up in the rocking chair. In here, we got the upper control arm, which is also known as the camber arm. And not only am I chopping it here so I can get access to the top of it where the bushing is at. Absolute nightmares are that being made right now. Long story short, that bushing is stuck in that little hole. And um, I'm chopping the camber arm so I can get farther up in there. Um, thanks. Dude, nothing special. You're filming? Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Ready for this, boys? Oh, this cam arm's about to snap right off. I'm snapping this cam arm right off. So it's done. Ow! Ow! <laughs> Look at all those chickens. 9.30 at night. 
and I rattle it loose to the point where this bolt is now about to push through. Ah, burning me. Look at that. Oh my God, this thing's on fire. Basically, I was hacking at it for so long that all the debris in there from the vibration just knocked it loose and I got the rest of the bolt out the other side. Guys, I don't know how to tell you this, but it's what, day three, day four, but it's finally time to install the camber arms. I also have to note that there was three adjuster nuts. Now there's two. I took the last one out. Oh, I'm just getting started. Everything's bolted up and maxed out and ready for the wheel to go back on. I don't know how I feel about this, but I'm kind of excited. I wasn't able to actually bolt up the wheel because the control arm is actually pushed too far out and it is too cambered in, equaling out to my wheel hitting the filler neck. Now I'm just gonna pull that control arm bolt in because it's maxed all the way out right now and that should bring me in a half inch on the bottom. And then I'm gonna pull this camber bolt out and I'm gonna put that nut back in, which should also give me a half inch back out and we should be away from the filler neck. Boys, negative 23? Negative 23? We're sitting on the fuel filler neck. Mark 5 Tay, where are you at? The wheel's actually only held on by two lugs because I couldn't get the wheel to sit flat to bolt in the other wobble bolts because we're sitting on the fuel filler neck. But now that I know I'm able to achieve negative 23 and I actually did not move the lower control arm because I love how much the bottom of that wheel kicks out, you can actually see there's enough room for me to bring this wheel out and hopefully not hit the fuel filler neck. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the camber arm more. I brought it out almost a full another half inch. So let's say we adjusted the camber arm a full inch and didn't adjust the bottoms. I think this is the one, this is probably around negative 20. That looks wild. We got a little bit of toe in, so what I'm gonna do for that is instead of adjusting the toe arm itself, I'm gonna adjust the actual toe adjusting bolt that comes factory on this car, which is then gonna pull that lower control arm in a little bit from being two inches to an inch and a half, and we're gonna be even with the front as far as fitment goes. The wheel is still hitting the filler neck. Negative 17, not on the filler neck, fender to lip. This is epic. Bro, what? I just bolted up the front wheel. I had to put a block underneath it because when I tried to pull the jack out, I couldn't even get it out. I put the side skirts on and you guys are really gonna get a feel for what we got going on now. We got negative 17 in the rear. We are not touching the filler neck, but we are fender to lip, which leads me to my next conclusion. I think I'm gonna have to start running a fuel cell. Just put it in the trunk, run the lines to the front. I already been done talks with what Mark five and no struts. They both run fuel cells and they've been killing it in the static game. And I think that's just the route I'm gonna have to go. This Mark five is, is like literally, it's just getting started. I am like, look at it. How can I not be happy with this? You know what I'm saying? Like this is just getting so crazy. Like after all the stuff that happened in Tilted V1, you already knew that I wanted to go Tilted V2 again and just make it so much crazier. And this is only the start. Like we got body work to do. We might have to wrap it. We might go big twin turbos. I'm speaking too much. But no, like this car is just, it's gonna be what I want it to be. You know what I'm saying? Like, look at it. Like, it is about to go so hard. Just imagine just pulling up to your local meet or just seeing it on camera. Like, it is the most beautiful thing I've probably ever created. I wanted to tuck in the rear, but I mean, I don't know now. I was just talking about fuel cell, but I don't know. If I just run a little more, just a little more gap in the rear and run 50Ks, fender to lip would be so insane then I wouldn't have to run a fuel cell. So I wanna hear what you guys have to say down below. So I'm like in a pickle right now. I'm like fender to lip, as I'm looking at it, both the wheels bolted up, they're bolted up. The car is being held up by itself. So if I was to run like that much more room, I'm on 50 case, this thing is not moving. And if I make another two inch extension, I won't have to tuck in the front. So I'm in the dilemma right now, tuck or no tuck. I th This is so crazy. Look how crazy that lip looks like on the outside. 
just a little bit higher. It would not move. And if it smashed, I wouldn't even care. And it's like not even just the wheel and the side skirts and all the fitment that's getting me hyped up. Like I'm just doing little things to the car, like the Audi R8 oil cap. If you guys want to pick up one of those, I'll have it linked below. Same with the black cap coolant ball. Like it's such a simple model. I'll have that link below. It was freaking 20 bucks. And look how good the engine bay looks with the, oh my God. As I got to end this one off here. This is just, this is where we got to end off. Fuel cell or no fuel cell? Are you excited? Let me know. Should I run the fuel cell and tuck, go another two inches, maybe even three inches lower? Or should I go fender to lip in the rear, keep my OEM fuel tank, be a little bit higher off the ground? I'm in the dilemma and I need your help. You guys, you guys have been so supportive lately in the comments and just, you've been leading me in the right direction. So I really appreciate it. So I hope you guys are excited for future content. We got lots to come. I'm excited for it. I hope you guys are excited for it. If you guys are hyped and you made it this far in the video, throw the video a like if you enjoyed, subscribe. And um, I, I truly hope to see you guys in the next one. So. I'll see you guys there. Don't want to put you down. Bill's neat to you. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Peace. A little bit of bonus footage. I had to throw you guys the hood down, the trunk down. And I just want to let you guys know, I really do appreciate how far we've come. I appreciate all the likes, the love, the comments, the suggestions. And seeing all the comments of people telling me like, I've my video has been taking them out of dark places is what's really been pushing me to get back on the platform because it... <laughs> It, it, it humbles me to see all the love. That's all I'm going to say. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.